Hey guys, I just wanted to do my review of the X-Files 6th um, episode miniseries revival. I just finished watching the final episode. I was binge watching the previous five yesterday, and so I just wanted to give you... And I know I mentioned way, way back in my reaction video to the X-Files that I was... That I was decided I was going to do... Um, just to review like all six episodes, just when the series was o just when the series was over, just because of my overall schedule. Um, so basically, the um, it takes you know takes place in real time, takes place you know nine years after I want to believe, which is quite frankly a forgettable movie. It, you're, you really don't have to watch it; you don't miss anything at all. It's just adding adding nothing to the plot. Um, of course, it takes place 14 years after the end of the um, previous, at the end of the series finale, the original show, in which you know Mulder realized that you know 2012 was the countdown for when the aliens were going to colonize the Earth, thanks to uh, alien you know humans aiding them and humans alien aiding them in, in um in exchange for being spared. So there's this um. Online talk show her online talk show host and conspiracy theorist um, named Tad O'Malley, who's played by Joe McHale from Community and the Soup, who decides to bring Mulder and Scully back together because he suspects that they're the conspiracy that that both 9/11 and the original conspiracy Mulder and Scully were investigating were just smoke screens for it was really a human conspiracy, which is basically that aliens weren't the ones calling the shots in the conspiracy, that it, that it was just a... There's this whole explanation about... It dates back to Roswell, all the way back to the crash of a UFO in Roswell in 1947, how a scientist was... You know, the aliens came in peace, and they only came in response to hydro, you know, nuclear testing, acting as a beacon, and they foresaw humanity destroying itself, and they came to our, our aid, but this shadowy cabal ended up t you know, taking an alien captive and it was the first in men and they were the first of many to basically they were they basically use alien DNA and hoarded their technology in order to create par in order to cover in order to basically I guess like subvert civil I guess in order to manipulate the go manipulate the government and manipulate, you know, civil liberties and public policy, etc. And just even like even the biggest conspiracy theorists would think that you know it was aliens who you know there was like an alien conspiracy, rather than you know humans wanting to rule over humans, not aliens wanting to rule over humans and repopulate the earth. But, and just hearing that and knowing just how much the whole mythology of the X Files and this whole government in the whole conspiracy and the whole conspiracy I don't know I don't think it was really like the, the best move it basically just feels like it's taking too it takes too many it's almost like an Illum essentially more or less in a nutshell like an Illuminati type of conspiracy almost like to it, it feels like too much like they decided to change from an alien conspiracy to like an Illuminati like kind of conspiracy on un not unlike well it's similar to basically the Hydra conspiracy and Captain America's Civil War, just to make it relevant to, you know, post-9-11, into, like, a post-9-11 world, and, you know, this, you know, all this, like, in the world, like, you know, surveillance and the digital age and all this stuff, and I really just think it should have just stuck to its roots and just kept it strictly, like, a more, like, alien conspiracy thing. I mean, I had mixed feelings about it because it just seems like they're trying to make the show relevant and not stay true to what it really is and what made the show work, at least in terms of, like, you know, the, the stay true to the mythology. But, I mean, it, it was kind of as long. I mean, they kept, like, Chris Carter kept, you know, complicating the mythology about how the aliens were supposed to take over and repopulate. First through, like, black, first through, like, black alien ooze, then it was just through a super soldier program where human alien, you know, human alien hybrids who are like almost immortal unless they can be killed by an iron ore by magnetite in which they just go flying into a wall of, me of the element and they're destroyed. And now it just seems like 
and the and of course you figure out the um, the cigarette smoking man was also still alive and and apparent and now it just seems like his plan is to as you revealed in the last episode through the Spartan virus, which is basically is put in like smallpox is put in like smallpox vaccines and was put in sm- like back when it was mandated by Amer- by the by the US for everybody to get those, which basically removes like which basically removes the gene that allows people removes the gene that uh, so people would have a immune system, and now they're all dying. And people were this counts like mass contagions, and people were dying of a of flu, of the flu, and you know, anthrax, and malaria, and you name it. And only and Scully had found out that the alien DNA during from her previous abductions way back in I think season, t- I think it was like season two. Well, she was like, given alien DNA in order to create an immunity to to the virus. It was basically, and probably subsequently, her son, and subsequently her son William. Um, it was, but she was basically supposed to be like one of the chosen ones, as explained by, also explained by Agent Reyes, who. I mean, I know she didn't have a lot of fans. It was probably one of the few people who liked her, at least as a supporting character. I know she and Dogged did not have. I mean, they weren't as good as they weren't as good as um, you know, Agent Smolder and Scully. But the fact that I didn't like the fact that I mean, at least we found out what happened to her. But the fact that um, the cigarette smoking man blackmailed her into saying that you know to leave the FBI and work for her, you know, and work for her by basically saying that she can give them a cure for um, the Spartan virus, which was already sent to motion in 2012, as mentioned in the series finale for the original rot show. I don't know. It just seems like it, I, I, like I said, it's like it's like even Scully called her on and saying, "Why would you bring me here? Bring tell me all this just to call, just to tell me what a coward you were." And she just said there was no hope for it and. Scully realized that her alien DNA could be used, um, she can, like, get the genome that can be used to create a vaccine and, like, save the human population who was not, who was affected by the Spartan virus. Um, and these are basically, I mean, basically what I'm talking, this is basically what happened, what's been mentioned in, um, the, like, the, like, the, like, the, the final episode and the first episode, they also talked about a woman who, had been abducted by alien, or abducted by aliens, were really humans who were experimenting on her and having her like produce fetuses, you know, produce all these fetuses and basically, you know, implanting memories in her to cover up the fact that you know these were men who were experimenting on her, you know, experimenting on her with human DNA and how she got to be built, how she was telepathic now and and I guess they were creating like. I'm not sure, I guess they're just create. I don't know, I guess... I guess the fetuses were just, like, experiments on the, uh, the Spartan virus, the alien DNA, and I don't... It was kind of hard to follow, but, um... And then, but of course, and they also, like, of course, also mentioned that Mulder finds a... And O'Malley find this warehouse that has, like, a alien spaceship that runs in zero-point energy, um... Which of course was like destroyed by the conspirators, and she was killed by the by an alien ship, and and the series essentially ends with you know everybody people are like you know du- you know mass riots in the streets, people are getting sick, and hospitals and centers for disease control being like overcrowded, and basic and Mulder confronts the cigarette smoking man about what he's about what he's done and he's and the cigarette smoking man tries to offer Mulder a membership of the as his as, become a member of the conspiracy in exchange for the cure he turns it down but agent Miller who is like a he was basically a sort of like younger version of Mulder as like personality wise he's played by Robbie and Mel um he's somebody like who's acting I didn't who was like at least characterization I didn't like 
don't know what it was if it was the characterization or his acting, at least in like the second to last episode, but he felt like kind of stiff. This one he just felt like more comfortable in the role. And this is where he came to rescue Mulder fr from the cigarette smoking man. And they were supposed to meet up with Scully and they were supposed to meet up with Scully um, to try to get the I try to get the cure, but then of course the episode ends with um, but Scully explains to Miller that she's in, she's in, Mulder's in such bad shape that he's going to need stem cells in order to find a cure, and the only stem cells they ha can get it from is from William, but they don't know where he is now. And the and the whole series basically just ends with the alien ship. You know, hover, you know, hovering overhead with a tractor beam, and just the camera just zooms in on Scully. And basic, and and that's again, that's the going back to you, um, the move to make it, the move to make, um, what is it? It goes back to making the whole conspiracy more related to like you know 9/11 and you know almost kind of like like I said the Captain America Hydra conspiracy, um, too similar to that. But I think it's why it like lost a lot of viewers after that because it basically said that because of the loss of viewership that the show was going to get concluded and we once again are not going to have a resolution, which is what. It's kind of frustrating about this frustrating me about this show since it since I've been watching it. I I'll, I'll admit I haven't watched all two hundred episodes. I watched like a good hand. I watched maybe like half the episodes of it during its airtime. But it's still the fact that it, it just feels and of course like the two movies. But it just feels like this thing about it, the closer we get to the truth and the more we learn more about the conspiracy, the more the less resolu It always ends with without any kind of resolution and now and now god have willing that maybe it'll be a comic book that explains how that story is going to end end off you know pan out but um but besides besides those two episodes about the mythology i think it was like the stand and people always say that the standalone episodes monster of the week episodes were their best episodes and that proved to be true especially in the second episode in which um like a new gent, there was like a new gent, there was like an, um, f a, gu a guy running a company called Nugenics, and that was part of the conspiracy about, you know, the alien, you know, the more of the alien DNA being spliced with human DNA, except the teenager was using high-pitched sounds to, like, reach out to his sister, who was, like, separated, he was separated from at birth, because, because, like, the mom tried to escape from the dad, and... The while he was a fetus, um, the guy his name was Kyle, you know, communicated with his mother to you know cut you know cut open her stomach so she he could get free, and then the dad and Kyle's dad had her committed because saying that she tried to murder the fetus, then eventually Kyle was able to find his sister Molly, and they both of them like used the like abilities, like it's like telekinetic abilities to kill the dad and subdue Agents Mulder and Scully and just go, and go on the run. And it, it, it kind of, it's like one of the, it's one of the episodes that kind of, you know, not only dealing with um, Scully trying to come to terms with the fact that she wants to get, be, that she's finally getting reinstated with Mulder at, at the FBI as part of the X-Files to learn more about why they did this to her and all, all these other mothers and also deal with the loss, and also it, it, the show deals a lot, addresses her her being guilt-ridden with having to give up William, well, both characters, Scully more so, and especially in Home Again when, you know, when basically, basically, um, it was episode four, it's when Scully's mother dies, and she was asking about her younger brother Charlie, who was who was estranged from their mother. And the, her last words were to Mulder and Scully were, "My son's name William too," which is also the name of Scully's older brother. And they have to deal with like a 
uh, something somebody called a trash man who was like killing people or killing people were um, involved in relocating the homeless for forcefully in Philadelphia and it was basically you know the creation of an artist who, who like lives out in the sh like lives in this abandoned building it's like a thought projection or a thought form and it just basically confronts the fact and Scully just feels more like guilt ridden about the fact that if you're a creator the, you created the problem you're responsible for it even if, even if she had good in, even if you had good intentions and now is now she's worried and she, she has this whole speech to Mulder about I don't want to feel like William knows about us does she ever have doubts about doubts about himself because we abandoned him does he feel like we treated him through him discarded him like trash and there's also episode five which is it's not so much paranormal related I mean it relies more to like a terrorist bombing but it basically has um, introduces Agent Miller and also Agent Einstein, who are both feel the dynamic of the younger dynamic of the the skept the the believer in the paranormal and the skeptic like Mulder and Scully. Um, I guess um, Einstein's a more like extreme case is a more extreme case, and she's played by Lauren Ambrose, and she's more like probably be more skeptical than. Scully and even more uptight and incredibly uptight to the point where it's kind of hard to like her and because of the death of Scully's mom Scully decides to pair off with Miller and try some um special I guess some I guess some kind of technique um and maybe not new medicine but I don't know the word to describe it but then and then Mulder tries to talk Agent Einstein to giving him mushrooms or to com communicate with a comatose, you know, terrorist bomber suspect in order to learn more about when the next attacks are taking place in Texas. And basically, this is a really funny moment where Mulder goes on this like acid trip and he's like, he's like doing a like, Saturday night fever stress down, you know, the hospital corridor and then the streets and then like in, uh, I guess, in a bar. And I guess in a Texas bar where he sees like images of the lone gunman and c cigarette smoky man and Skinner, and you're not really sure. I mean, I don't know. They, they keep going back and forth as to whether or not it was um, a placebo effect or really he was really high on shrooms. It's worth this, and whether it was just something Miller, um, not Miller, Einstein just told um, Walter Skinner just to avoid further just the severity of her punishment for her actions and I guess and also I also have to say probably the my favorite episode of the entire series was Mulder and Scully chase the chase the were monster because it basically involves like a giant like lizard like reptilian looking creature like, killing people going on this killing spree and it has all these gags where, like, you know, Mulder's, like, can't get his camera phone to work, and then they're attacked, then he's a camera phone to work, and then he's, bec and he and, like, a animal control guy are being attacked by the creature, and then with cam but Mulder couldn't get the camera, had the wrong lens on, the camera was face to camera, so it just recorded him, like, scream screaming and blood squirting his face, and, um... It's probably like one of the best episodes in these series thus far. As like, and it was like really like great comedy blended in. It's like it was so, and we basically find out that it's not like a were lizard. It's basically a lizard, a were man, a, a lizard who a reptilian creature was bitten by a human who turns into a man, and then he becomes with it, and then he monologues with Mulder of this. He has a desire to like cover up and find clothing and go find a job and a hotel and. You know, you know, BS is, you know, talk to people, you know, tell people cell phones, and it's all weird, you know, go buy a puppy, you know, go buy a puppy, and it turns out that the animal patrol guy, animal control guy was the serial killer, and that he was in, and that the were man was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I guess it's like listening to this entire explanation is what, it's, a, you can just tell, like, 
the funniest part is like you can tell like just something in like Mulder just like broke like inside him just broke it it just broke him like something broke inside of him like he the boy just takes a huge chug of an alcohol that um the the wear man named guy man gives to him that he just passes out is where he's just like he's seen so much of all the paranormal stuff he's seen like this one takes the cake and it's the most absurd to the point where the, you mean even the show and other character other characters have to acknowledge how absurd it is that because he was played and it, it was probably like one of the funniest episodes i've seen and probably like the high the best episode in the six episode run in my opinion um but overall i say if you're definitely an x-files fan if you haven't watched this series, I'd say definitely check it out. Um, it's pretty, it just feels like a bit of a microcosm of the whole series in which um, the whole alien mythology gets kind of complicated and a little bit iffy about how they about the changes they keep making to it in order to you know sustain that plot. Um, but his monster of the week episodes are usually have like its strongest are usually the strong are like have the strongest character moments and comedy and comedy and intrigue. And although the the only although like I said although like the ending of the original series it's very and the original series it's pretty anti it's pretty anticlimactic. Um, is the only downsides to it. I had a great time watching this. This felt like you know for the most part this felt like quintessential X Files. Had the spirit of the original series. So if you haven't checked again, check this series out for better. It's check this series out. I promise, if you if you're a fan, you will love it regardless of its whatever its flaws. Um, I mean, let me know what you guys think. If you have, will you we want to check it out and binge watch it? Um, have you already seen all six episodes? Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Um, I'm gonna do my Supergirl review later tonight. I've still have to watch the episode, and in addition to all the regular shows, I'm going to re be reviewing. I'm going to do reviews for Triple Nine and also Eddie the Eagle. So it also means that since I'm seeing Triple Nine tomorrow night, it means my flash, my I'll, pro I'll put up my I probably put up my um, either my Agent Carter or my Flash review Tuesday night and the Triple Nine, and then maybe and then maybe the other and then I guess they'll come late and then those come later in the week but i'll let i'll keep you guys posted um if you like this video like share and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys soon take care